this. We're going to get this done. Don't worry. Yeah. We're professionals. Here we go. <laughs> Did you want to charge one? Yeah, I'll scan. Okay, yeah. I have some on the side there. I'll scan over here. Okay, sure. <laughs> so we have Debbie Keeper here from Urban Gym Gallery. And uh, Debbie, can you introduce me? Oh, well, hello. Uh, this is Albert McLeod, uh, our illustrious elder. <laughs> and uh, Albert is here tonight to moderate a question and answer with these two young, fine actors. And that's all I'm saying. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> and we're at the Cinema Tech Theater in downtown Winnipeg, and it's nine o'clock. I'm not sure where, what time it is where you guys are. Is it bedtime? <laughs> Wait, us? Yeah. <laughs> in this job, there's no bedtimes. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't have a bed. We're grown ups now. <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna try and get the sound turned up. So. My name is Albert McLeod, and um, and I know one of the uh, um, partners in this is the uh, Wabadaki Two Spirit Society, and then uh, John John Silly Boy played Mother Mary, so I know John John quite well, and uh, and I've been involved in the Two Spirit movement for forty years now, beginning in Vancouver in nineteen seventy nine. And it's come quite a long way in terms of, um, you know, creating awareness about, you know, LGBTQ2 population among Indigenous peoples, you know, with Métis peoples. In Manitoba, we have uh, two Métis locals that are two-spirit, and I know there's one in BC. And I know in the trip to uh, the Vatican to talk to the Pope recently, there was a two-spirit person from BC who was part of that delegation. And so slowly that awareness is building. And in this film, it was very much about uh, a same-sex relationship of two young men, and particularly Indigenous men in the East. And, um, and what I was thinking about is you, you're, I'm not sure if you have seen Brokeback Mountain, which was a, a similar type film about the intimacy and relationship between two men. Um, and how that ended, and then how your film ended, that your sort of your perspective on, on sort of the narrative of this particular film and the message it, it you know, as Mary Simon said, what is the legend or the myth or the story that it is telling to us as Canadians? So either of you want to take that on? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I guess, you know, this film is, has made some comparisons, but I think exploring the two-spirited people and, and just that journey is, is very different because you know, we're connecting to a, a big part of the story and a big part of the edit as well was, was connecting the land as a part of our journey. Every time we, were, we would get through a new experience or, or learn another lesson, we would explore a new land. And so it's sort of like this metaphor analogy of, of that. And, and that's a really important part of it because when, you, when you're able to connect with the land, you're able to connect with yourself. And that's a big part of, uh, of the two-spirited community. And of course, John was, played a huge part in that and just making sure that me and Josh uh, represented properly and, and just really helped give us a deep understanding of of what that really means at the core and um, huge help, huge help, Josh. Yeah, John was definitely a big help on informing us uh, of the two spirit information as well. And also as well as teaching the Mi'kmaq language for me. And yeah, like the language was really important and I really wanted to uh, like do it justice for the language because like, it's like not, very often like indigenous people get to see their language I like, portrayed on screen. And so that's what I kind of want to want to do. Like, like, you know, how like make the inspire the Mi'kmaq community just be like, whoa, it's so cool to have a film that I can have our language on there. And exactly like, like the um, reviews of like the Mi'kmaq communities of, of the film and 
they were, it was like very, very happy news and just it made me so happy. Like the amount of work I put in for the language and it was all because of John. John uh, helped me with that. And I remember when I first came in, I was like working on the language for like a month and John was like, this is, this is not Mi'kmaq. You gotta, <laughs> gotta do it with me. Yeah, I think that in the film, it really clearly shows a, a sort of a land-based perspective in the, the different locations, but also the different plans that really were up front, you know, on, on the screen. And, you know, when you were having the fight with the plants, with each other, those long, long plants, and, and just how in every scene there is a perspective on the local, you know, whether it's the trees where you meet the mother, or, you know, as you're moving across the landscape, it's quite a, an amazing point of view where the plants are really in the forefront a lot of the time and become part of that story. Uh, you know, depending on, on what's happening. Um, now, when, when I saw, I was watching this earlier and I saw Mother Mary. And I was just, after that point in the film, I was just so fascinated. <laughs> but, but just in terms of how, how that story of the Mother Mary is, is not overt, right? It's, you have to interpret the bar scene, the people, and who Mother Mary is, right? And running the bar and, and all of those stories. I think. So I thought that was a really good aspect of the, of the film where you introduce more the inside culture of the LGBT or the two-spirit community, which is more complicated and, and sophisticated and nuanced, but also part of community, right? And, and so I, I, I thought that was really great. I, I know John, so it was great to see John on, on screen. Um, so I'm just going to ask the audience if there's any questions or comments people want to share. Okay, we've got one here. Um, well, my dad's his mom, and uh, my mom's from Saudi Arabia and Manitoba, but I, uh, I appreciate so much the language. But how did you say that line when you were telling, when you were telling him about having a big part? Being angry. How did you say that? Mm. Uh, can you? Can yeah. How did you when you when you were speaking um, about the, his big heart, and you're not translating? You're just and he's just sitting there. And the question is, how did you say it? Yeah. How, yeah. How did you say it? Can you, can you say it again? Do you want me to say it? Oh man. <laughs> I, I haven't uh, been practicing the Mi'kmaq language in over. <laughs> that's, that's that's a little cruel, don't you think? <laughs> no, like yeah, that was um, a lot of it was like kind of like on point, but some parts during the edits, like that scene, had to be like re-recorded during ADR. And I remember like doing the ADR, the Mi'kmaq was still like in my system because I remember like, I could work so hard on it. And it I remember like having Breton in the room, well, in the Zoom call, basically. I was like in Ottawa. And uh, yeah, and it was just kind of them just giving me the, the basically the accent, if you can understand. Okay, well, the thank accent you. and dialect. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm trying to learn Mi'kmaq, but clearly I should try to learn <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, I'm um, curious about the uh, the dancing. Did you have to learn, or is that part already was that already something that you uh, either or both of you were doing? I honestly, I lied during the film. I haven't danced since I was four. I danced like four months before. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> And like if a, if like a professional fancy dancer saw that, like yeah, he's he's, he's lying. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but yeah, it was it was very very like nice to get introduced to that part of our culture, like basically like me just regaining that culture and like living through the dance. And I remember like doing the dancing was very cathartic, even like it was like I was dancing so hard that I would get blisters on my feet. It would hurt to walk. It would just felt so good to just like 
dance with the, the crow hop and the, the the southern fancy and just yeah we felt really connected especially um especially that the, the last scene the last scene was really good like i remember like for that scene, I was like, I gotta dance to a beat, you know. And like, like, you get, like they're asking me to dance. I'm like, I need to dance to a beat. So like, I pull out my phone and I ask for a speaker, and like, we just put on some power music, some Northern Cree, and I just started like, you know, jamming. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like I gotta thank Eric Mentuk from uh, Manitoba. Like, definitely was a big influence on part of that. Yeah. Part of the oh, sorry, that was Dennis actually. <laughs> part of the story is about finding a place and finding family uh, is an, and then ex exploring these vacant places of memory or you know families past which really I think is very much an experience for indigenous youth today in North America of exploring the past but also their future and just a question about the quest you know for the mother and and the importance of that to, to, to gay people, right? Of, of having that family. And then towards the end, there is the family there with the, the younger brother uh, and both of you really establishing that, that chosen family that is not the, you know, what we would consider a nuclear family, but, but a, another type of family. Mm -hmm. Any comments about that? Well, Philip? I've been speaking. Um, I guess uh, I have I have a family member that's two spirited, and it was really difficult for for him to come out with it. And um, and I guess for me, it was just really important to really tell this story for him more than anything. And. Uh, I remember he was there at TIFF and I could just see the shift in him and he's younger. And I just remember thinking and obviously conversations after afterwards, but just remember thinking if it was able to affect him in that way, I really hope that it can affect other youth in that same way. Uh, and if it's not right away and immediate, and if they're not ready to receive that, that information, uh, then hopefully down the road, um, if they need that sort of guidance, that'll be the moment that, that it triggers that memory or, or, that, or that moment in the film that affected them in that way, or more than anything, just help them feel less alone in, in the world and in their heads, because especially at that very delicate age when you're discovering things about yourself and, and about others it can be very intimidating it's especially if you don't have people around you who are supporting you fully and so uh, yeah i just really wanted to open up that conversation especially to the younger audiences and and so that whatever direction they choose to go in it doesn't doesn't matter, but as long as you feel loved and supported, and if you can find that in a character, if you can find that through watching a character's journey and how they came out on the other side, okay, uh, it, maybe that'll help with their own process and, and the darkness that they might be in, and seeing that yeah, there is there is that light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, pain is temporary, like everything in life, change is constant, and so. Um, Hopefully they don't feel lost in it all. Uh, any other from the audience? We're going to be shy. I'm a little shy, but I'll ask anyways. <laughs> I don't want to stand up. Uh, was there a certain scene in the movie that you connected with or like was really meaningful when you filmed it in particular? Like, yeah, a particular scene during the film where you really felt it uh, you know, strike you as, as, you know, critical or something very important. You know, there's many portions of the film that were very important, but uh, any part of the film that really got you? Yeah, there was a lot of things to choose from. 
I think for me it was probably uh, when I did that monologue about my uh, family, like never seeing my nieces and nephews. During that time, I definitely related to that scene because I, at the time I never met my sisters, my brothers, nieces or nephews or no, no one on my fam on my dad's side. And uh, but only until recently, until some unfortunate events, I got to meet my family and it was really nice to, to see them. And it kind of felt something whole inside of me. But yeah, that scene in particular, it, uh, it, it did struck some chords inside me. So yeah, that was one of the difficult scenes. And Philip, what did you uh, see particularly? There were so many scenes in there. You were you were all over this film. Oh, sorry, I was listening to Josh. I wasn't thinking that massive. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess like there's so many. I don't know. It's it's. Uh, uh, I guess just that first moment that. Uh, that I saw my, my mom uh, was, was really powerful because we actually, uh, we never met each other. Me and, and the other actress, we, uh, we were kept separate throughout the entire shoot. Um, and they coordinated it that way so that the first moment that I see her is legitimately the first moment that I lay eyes on her. And uh, so when I looked up and I saw her, it was crazy. I, she looks very similar to, to my mother. And so I almost had to like do a double take because I don't know, like it, it, it almost like I thought it was my mom for like a split second then. And it's like, <laughs> my mom's not a very good actress. So I hope it's not her. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, uh, yeah, she's so. She's so beautiful and such an incredible, just human being to to work across from and just like to have a conversation with. And um, to this day, it's so weird. Every we've seen each other at a few premieres and and on set, obviously. But every time we see each other, we never say goodbye. <laughs> it like somehow we get pulled away from each other or or. One of us has something we need to do and the other one has to leave or whatever it is. And so we've never actually said a proper goodbye. And I thought that was like life really imitating art. Um, and yeah. In the scene about the, the family feast, who made the bannock? <laughs> the I wasn't yeah, was that a prop? We didn't even get to eat it. That's the no. worst part. No. <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, okay, anybody else? Panic. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a question about the, the scene when you put on your mother's dress in the movie. Do you find that that character or your character had taken acceptance of femininity when you came on the dress, of, of being closer to your mom and being weird in that moment? Yeah, the scene where you put on the mother's dress and when you're alone in the room and just how, what that represented to the character uh, in, uh, you know, was it an expression of femininity or closeness to your mother? I have no idea why I did that. It wasn't even scripted. I just... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just... Uh, it was it was really cool that sequence we shot very creatively um it was it was detailed in, in the script what would happen but we didn't i didn't end up doing any of that and brett probably hates me for it but um i just kind of like explored the space and like it was a really cool set design and they had like a lot of options and i just saw this dress and um, it reminded me of a, of a dress that my, that my mom had. And I just like, I, re I was really missing my mom too because it was a really long shoot and I was kind of homesick and in the middle of COVID. So I couldn't, couldn't fly any family in to visit me. And uh, I just wanted to like, like just 
hug her, I guess, and that and and that was my way of hugging her through the the dress that reminded me of her, I guess. And and then I just kind of threw the hanger over my head, continued on my way. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, it was a great scene. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Well, we want to thank you. We don't want to keep you too long. Uh, and you know, it's getting late. It's actually nine, almost nine thirty here in Winnipeg. So thank you for joining us, and good luck. Any thoughts about the future projects? <laughs> <laughs> keep an eye out for twenty twenty three. That's all. Um, That's all. <laughs> we can't sign. We can't say anything else because of uh, NDAs and contracts. So we don't want the Reaper man on our doors. So well, thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, good luck on your your next uh, sessions and the next screening. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great contribution to Canadian film, as Mary Simon has said, with Mary Governor, and. Uh, uh, and a great, a great story, you know, that I think a lot of people will really love and appreciate uh, all of your work, the whole group. Thank you. Jimmy Glitch. <laughs>